Dating pro tip. If they tell you that all of their exes are assholes, red flag. Incorrect. No court has the legal authority to mandate support for non-biological children. You know, I used to think I liked being right before TikTok. We'll start with Joseph Sinowa from Florida. So one day in St. John's County, a baby is born and Joseph Sinowa is there to sign the birth certificate, obviously believing he is the father. At some point after this birth, the mother of the child decided that Joseph did not have to see the child ever again because he was fighting for visitation in court. During this visitation trial, a paternity test was performed and Joseph was found to not be the biological father. At that time, a judge ceased his child support payment order, which by the way, very convenient that she'll accept the child support payments from him as dad, but then when he actually wants to spend time with the child as a dad, no, he can't. Classic. Anyway, the Department of Revenue overturned the judge's decision and insisted that he continue to pay for this child who is not his and he has no visitation rights to. Oh, but remember, no court has the legal authority to mandate support for non-biological children. Moving on to Gabriel Cornejo of Texas. In 2003, a child support court in Texas ruled that Gabriel was responsible for paying for his ex-girlfriend's child support. Gabriel was not present for this trial. Gabriel was never made aware of this. They decided to just let the back payments of child support accrue until he decided to figure it out that someone had just named him as a father to a child that they didn't make. So a decade later, Gabriel is busy raising his three own children and two of his nephews when he is served by a deputy who is making him aware that he is listed as having another child. He goes in and disproves his paternity, but the state and his ex-girlfriend are still demanding $65,000. Oh, but no court has the legal authority to mandate support for a non-biological child. And we would be remiss to not discuss Carnell Alexander of Michigan. Carnell Alexander became a father 27 years ago when his ex-girlfriend wrote his name down on a form while filling out a paper for state assistance. Like many women, she was told that her benefits could be reduced or even terminated if she did not list a potential father. And if you didn't know that benefits programs are reliant on you naming any and all potential fathers, now you know. Anyway, as soon as she wrote down that name, the child support started racking up. Alexander was sent one summons on this notice, which he never received because he was in jail. Fast forward almost three decades, he finally finds out that he's a dad during a routine traffic stop where he learns about a bench warrant for his arrest due to non-failure of child support. Do you know why I pulled you over today? It's because you're a dad, congratulations! And today, after another paternity test proving that he is not the father, the court and his ex-girlfriend still demand that he owes tens of thousands of dollars. Three men, cumulatively about $200,000 of debt, never spent time with these children. Oh yeah, but no court has the legal authority to mandate child support be made to non-biological children. I really gotta start Googling stuff before you comment on my videos. Access Code asks, If it's so easy to become a father just from being named on paperwork, what's stopping women from writing in like Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, whoever else? Very fair question. So it's not quite that simple, and I have an amazing story time to explain how I learned this. I know you guys hate when I do this, but I will once again be leaving the identities anonymous, sorry. This tale begins when a buddy of mine went on a Tinder date. And it goes... well. No wedding bells, but they tindered. They never hook up again, but a little bit later, he gets a message from her. It's a Tinder baby. And he's like, uh, I only met you once, but keep me posted, I guess. I mean, he's not just going to assume the kid is his. Well, as time goes on, she actually starts dating somebody, and then he gets a wonderful message. She says, I think I had my timeline mixed up. It must be my boyfriend's. Don't worry about it. It's not yours. He says, cool. Eventually just gets off Tinder. Well, flash forward a couple months, she and the boyfriend break up but she fails to secure child support from him because he actually disproves his paternity at the first trial. So no child support, she goes for state benefits, which as I've mentioned, women are told that their benefits can be reduced or terminated if they do not list a possible father. And some, not all, actually care about it being the real father. So while some counties will be like, just write down any address, we'll send a summons to it and say that we did the best we could to contact him. Others are like, you better find this guy. And where she lived, she needed to provide his address. So she's looking back on all these potential fathers, and she's like, fuck, I met these guys off Tinder. They came over to my place. I don't know where these guys live. But she was going to secure that bag, let me tell you what. This chick finds my buddy on Facebook using just his first name and the job he very briefly mentioned he worked at. But he was not responding to her messages or her friend request. So she moves on to plan B. She does some digging, and she reaches out to every single one of his ex-girlfriends that she can. She explains the situation, and she's like, who wants to dox your ex? And let me tell you how these women were like, me, 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 me. He's busted. 
he got served. Paternity was established. Dad found. She had to go all the way to the council of ex-girlfriends. And what's crazy is that's actually a good ending. Like, because of her actions, he was reunited with his real biological daughter. That is what the court actually doing their jobs looks like. But you can see why this is too much work for courts to want to consider doing themselves. This is why more often than not, they'll just settle for whatever address they do get and claim it as he served. So yes, you can write down Jeff Bezos, but you better hope Mackenzie's ready to fork over that address and phone number. <laughs> as wild as the story is, I feel like this is the way it should be. Like women, if you want to be the final gatekeepers of relationships, you got to remember who you let in the gate. Now I know some guys move away or maybe she didn't know his address and that sucks. But that doesn't mean that all these non-biological dads need to be on the line for it. Who do you think should be responsible for finding these dads? The women or the state? Let us know. This woman thinks me turning my chore preferences into mythical quests for my husband like Galadriel will ruin our intimacy. <laughs> hey, you ever just be a stepmom and then your stepkid wants you to read them a bedtime story and it's all about an evil stepmom? I don't think you can avoid it. Hansel and Gretel, Cinderella, all classic fairy tales where the stepmom is the villain. It's a thing. You know, sometimes just to keep him on his toes, I like to make sure my stepson wakes up to the sight of me sprinkling seasonings on him in preparation to eat him. For legal purposes, that was a joke. And it's so funny because most of us stepmoms actually love our stepkids so much, just like our own. But gotta admit, there are some bad ones out there. I have been stepmomming on the internet for some time now. I have read stepmom blogs. I have watched stepmom vlogs. And I've seen some shit. These are the top three red flags for you to look out for to know if you have a real life evil stepmom on your hands. Red flag number one, she discourages your relationship with your child, like in any way. I swear to you, at the first sign of, are you sure you have to pick up your kid today? You don't need him this weekend. We need more alone time. A real woman is never going to ask you to pick her over your child. If she's been paying any attention to you, she knows that your time with your child is precious. I mean, yes, you want to make sure that your partner's needs are met, but if her needs include you spending less time with your child... Also be wary of women who discourage your relationship with your co-parent. Effective co-parenting is very hard and you need a partner who's going to encourage you to work with them, not instigate fights with them. Big red flag number two. She accuses your daughter of having mini wife syndrome. <laughs> I hate this one so much. Mini wife syndrome is something that insecure stepmoms made up to describe the phenomenon of a young woman wanting control of her own home. They accuse their stepchild of trying to replace them in the partner role. That is so gross to me. When a boy's father leaves the house for any reason, he's told that he's the man of the house and that's it. No one questions it. But if a young girl does perfectly normal things like wanting to be close to her dad, cuddling her dad, wanting to have a say in her own fucking home, we sexualize them and accuse them of trying to be his wife. Finally, red flag number three. You worry that she resents your child. Even if it's just a tiny bubble of doubt, if there is the tiniest part of you that thinks that, if there is even the tiniest little voice telling you that your partner resents your child, Run. A good woman will never make you or your child feel this way because that resentment will never go away. Step parents who resent their children will mask it and hide it, but it will show itself. You don't want to wait and find out the way that they treat their biological child way differently. First sign of resentment. And if you're dating and you realize you don't think you could handle stepkids, that's fine. But decide now. If you are 100% ready for stepkids or it's a deal breaker, you're not wrong. But I swear to God, figure it out now because we got to stop messing with these kids. Dating pro tip. If they tell you that all of their exes are assholes, red flag. Obviously, no one really cares for their partner to be writing a glowing review about their ex or even really talking about them much at all. But if you've been dating for a little bit and you're starting to notice that all of their ex partners are either assholes or crazy or they're always the problem, red flag. Because of all those relationships, there is only one common denominator. Do people realize what a self-own it is to say that every partner they have ever picked out for themselves has been terrible? And it's really easy to trick ourselves into thinking that our partner talking crap about their ex is a good thing. Like, haha, they hate that jerk, threat neutralized. They only like me. But if every single one of their exes has been notoriously an asshole, then that leaves only two paths for you. You will either become the perfect chivalrous hero that none of those other losers could even try to be. 
or you'll just become the next asshole. And I gotta tell you, nine times out of ten, you just become the next asshole. And this is not a gender specific thing. Everyone is guilty of this. Girls always say my ex is such a jerk. And guys always say my ex was crazy. General rule of thumb is just don't talk about your ex. It's usually not necessary. And if you need to, just say my old friend and it'll make the story way more digestible. But here's the hardest pill to swallow. You shouldn't be hating your ex. Wild concept. Hear me out. Don't get me wrong. You can resent the things they've done. But have you ever heard of the old saying, holding on to anger is like drinking poison and hoping your enemy dies? This is especially important if you share children with your ex. Wouldn't you rather, if you can, I know this is way too much to ask for some people. Wouldn't you rather be able to say, you know, I didn't do a bad job with the person I became a parent with. I obviously saw a lot of qualities that will be great for our child, even if we didn't work out. You know, is that possible? I just think that instead of always hating your ex or villainizing them or convincing everyone they're bad, I feel like it would be more productive for you to remind yourself that there were positive qualities that drew you to them. Quality time spent, lessons learned, as opposed to throwing away the whole experience and the whole person is time wasted. Again, especially if you still share children with them. You picked that parent for them. I do think we're all allowed like that one Voldemort ex that we do not speak of. For the most part, once you break up, you gotta chill. Make like an Ariana Grande and say, thank you, next. But if you want to avoid another ugly breakup, you gotta look out for these people always talking shit about their ex. Run.